I see that uh, most of the staff are here and all oh. councils here. So uh, with that, uh, any disclosures? <clears throat> Seeing none. Mark, is the stage yours at this point or is it? Uh, three worship, actually, I'll, I'll be quiet today and I'll let Char do the presentation. Oh. I understand it saves about 45 minutes as well. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask uh, Char to come up and she's going to do a quick presentation. Oh. Well, that's about 20 minutes shorter than yours still, but no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. It's never going to be 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So this morning we're here for the um, last budget of uh, 2019 and this is your draft tax supported operating budget. Um, you've dealt with water and wastewater in January and the capital in February and um, our hope next year is that we'll be a little bit earlier. You've also approved, the council approved, um, you've also approved our budget guidelines in February. Um, and that outlined for you um, how we would be applying the assessment growth um, in, now and in the future. Um, and also you dealt with a separate user fees report um, in October 2018. And that provides us with the ability to uh, make sure our user fees are amended for, the, for January 1st as opposed to waiting until budget time. You will also see some minor amendments to uh, user fees as you've went through your package. There's a couple of new proposals put forward by managers um, and so that'll be a part of the final resolution is to um, again amend that user fee bylaw. Um, I should note as well um, we've received information that the Ministry of Transportation has amended its fire um, <coughs> fire charges and so that will form a part of the user fee bylaw um, <coughs> change as well that you will approve at the next council meeting. There are, um, according to the Municipal Act, some items that we don't have to budget for, specifically amortization of capital assets, post-employment benefits, and our solid waste landfill closure costs. So again, there will be another resolution at the end of the process um, today or early tomorrow um, in regards to approving that we don't budget for those items. The, this slide outlines the major budget drivers that you've, that you've went through in your package. Um, I apologize, it's, it's pretty tight, um, but hopefully your package in front of you is a little bit clearer. So it starts with just some of the um, regular base budget drivers that we've experienced this year. Um, some changes to policing and uh, solid waste, which is basically due, um, due to increased tonnages as well as increased costs. Roads maintenance has some increased needs in regards to um, their contracted services. Um, they also have some winter control contracted services needs. We do uh, winter control based on a five-year average, and um, it again is experiencing an increase. As well, we've got um, a decrease in our payment in lieu of taxes, and that's just based on some changes in assessment that we experienced. The next driver that's noted there is the corporate reorg, and I just want to speak to this briefly um, because we talked about it during the water and wastewater mm. budget, and if you will recall, um, with any reorg, we try to, to look at things in a more wholesome view, and in doing that, um, staff identified um, some different time allocations that were required for water and wastewater. Um, so there was a larger uh, portion of the cost that went to water and wastewater in regards to staff time. Um, as a result, you're seeing a reduction here in the tax-supported operating budget. <clears throat> okay. Um, in total, when the REARG was originally approved, it was expected to be about um, $115,000 um, change. And now we're looking at it's about um, 74. So it's down slightly, and that's just based on some additional assumptions, or the fact that we know more now based on uh, people who are in the roles. Okay. Um, then, then you get into your council approved, sorry, you get into your capital levy increases and we've got two lines here this year and one is the 1% um, that staff proposed during the capital budget review of 640,000 and the other is the three quarter percent that council added as well to accelerate the gravel road conversion. 
There are other council approved initiatives that you will notice throughout uh, the budget document. Um, some are staffing and remuneration related. Um, one of the larger ones is the reduction in recreation fees that was approved by council. Um, that was, is, the hope is to increase our participation and in our arenas and facilities. For new and enhanced services, you will notice a couple of um, significant programs, and I'm sure that staff will speak to them as we go through the pages. There's an initiative in regards to our recreational services to deal with um, increase in demand and our service standards and the public's expectations of what they would like to see in our parks and facilities. Um, so that's about $337,000. Um, as well, you've seen a report in regards to our field management groups um, in order to provide them with some additional funds um, to maintain that partnership at a level that, um, that hopefully will assist them in their work. That's about 119000 The There's a new initiative, a couple of new initiatives in regards to libraries when you get to that area, um, in regards to our community hubs and the service levels <coughs> required there. And there are um, some other miscellaneous um, new initiatives. I tried to just keep to the big ones here. There's, there are a couple of levy decreases as well um, in relation to our funding for Grandview and Land Ambulance. So we've seen some increases in that funding. Um, th those right now are budgeted at the normal amounts that we've experienced in the past. We've also um, budgeted for an additional $280,000 for supplementary tax revenue, and that's based on some of our mm. recent growth patterns that we're feeling that, um, that 280 is, is reasonable for something that we can maintain for a couple years. There's a decrease in social housing, and um, the bulk of that is due to our cost sharing um, changes that we have with Norfolk County as opposed to differences in, in services there. At the, um, at the end of the day, the end result is about a 2.62% increase on the average residential mm. uh, property taxpayer. So this chart just summarizes <clears throat> the 2.62% for 2019. Um, it's about a 5.91% municipal levy increase, but we're offset by a, about 2.7% assessment growth and also 0.62 um, education tax room and you can see that um, the average of the five years we've had about it if council approves the budget as is um, we've had on average a 2.1 percent average tax rate impact this next slide just shows you a little bit of a comparison last year our average assessed home was about 256,000 um, and paid property taxes about 3,200 and this year the proposal is um, based on an average assessed home of about 267,000 and the property taxes will be about uh, 3,300 so that's about a six dollar and 93 cents per month increase just um, sorry what we don't capture in that I and not that I want to make a a, a, a more negative picture but I think what's sometimes challenging is when we we make this comment and of course the press has picked up that what we don't catch is the is the impacts assessed uh, value on that property so that the change in value on that property does also change the taxes the ultimate amount right so when when it says you know an average increase of eighty three dollars I think maybe we, even though I, I want to celebrate that, I think we should be maybe making the, con or even I don't know if we could take what the value, and Mark, maybe you'd have that answer, but what our change over, our average change over an assessed value on property, um, and I realize that's challenging because of course you got, you know, industrial rates, you got, uh, but I mean, in this case, we're talking about residential home just to get that 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 truer number because I think that then you know people can appreciate because I know even last year when we did this chart we did get calls back from residents who would say well wait a minute my it didn't go up that much it it, it went up slightly more well that's because of the assessed value <clears throat> it's hard um, there'll be very few people who are exactly bang on the average right 
and that's that's the issue so on average the assessment did go up about 4.08 percent I don't know if Mark wants to speak more to notional rates <laughs> and through your worship and uh, and again to categorize it this is the average assessed value homes recognizing there's going to be homes that are much higher and homes are much lower but this across the average this is impacts assessed value and the average for the year and it does take into account the increases overall and the only <clears throat> maybe additional comment I'd make is that if everyone's home went up the average like right, the four percent in lieu of any other change they'd all see the exact same increase however we, we know <laughs> because some properties increase more than four percent some decrease more than less than four percent uh, there's a shift in between those uh, those those properties and there's also a shift in between the classes as well if, if other classes such as industrial and commercial didn't increase as much year over year you'll see a shift from and which is what we did see council did uh, receive a report on assessment shifts early in the year we did see a shift from the commercial uh, and <clears throat> industrial to the residential tax class primarily as well um, so this <laughs> depiction tries to take into account uh, the impacts of education rates uh, the impacts of the assessment shifts as well as the impacts of the tax levy the only thing it doesn't take into to account is tax policy changes so it does try to take that into account on an average basis so the, the increased percentage sh on average should be the increase for every home in, in Alden County I, th I think I mean it's one of those ones that it is at 2.62 percent depending on what your assessed value is the issue and I, I and I hear you it's is that if you're in a house that's assessed at, at uh, double that, then your 693 a month is is 13, 13. or 14, $14 a month. And and so everything is, is, is increased based on that percentage. And oftentimes people will see themselves saying, well, it's nice that you showed me that house. I don't know where you buy that house, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what the kind of phone calls we'll get. But the information is that is the average. And so we're having to use that as a depiction of uh, an example of whether or not we don't use the example because you know what for the for who this affects maybe it's better not to use the example and just it's a 2.62 percent and for the thousand residents that are average this works for everybody else they're into a math game so we can right. uh, you know look at maybe maybe that's maybe we're past that example of doing it but this is accurate information based on what we have on our average <coughs> assessment Sure. Um, through the mayor, uh, sometimes what we notice too is like waterfront properties. It, it might go up 25% over one or two years, depending on. And so that's where this gets blown right out of the scale. And then they comment that they're not getting any services and their taxes are going up exponentially. So you're right. It might it might be time to put this example to bed and and uh, maybe not show it unless people want to know. But again, it it does. It is a good estimate, but it's, it doesn't reflect the majority of taxes for a lot of residents. I, I guess I'm just finding it hard, Mark, and you, obviously you're the numbers guy, but I, I'm just, I'm finding it hard to believe that 266 is our average residential home in Haldeman County. I mean, I just flipped through the paper and I, I, I don't see very many homes being, you know, sold or listed at that and you know we have one on council who's an expert but i i don't I, i'm struggling with that number i i but if that is what it is i mean you you know i trust your your numbers and, and, worship, and it is correct i mean uh, if, you, if you looked at real estate uh, market and look at home sales you'd probably think it's low but i mean you got to bear in mind there's 20,000 residential homes in in Haldeman county and, and all across the county uh, there, there's homes that are you know significantly less than that and obviously there's some that are significantly more I mean uh, you know whether we you know sort of eliminate sort of this depictorial if you will it's a pretty common practice at the end of the day people want to know well, how much is that right I mean because a percentage is is a percentage and, and, and I think the CEO is correct it becomes sort of a numbers game how do I take 2.62 and add it to mine and I still may not get the right answer because my assessed value went up more or less than the average. So uh, this is sort of the, the standard practice in municipalities to show what the impact is on the average residential home. And I agree, it, it's 100% it's a math calculation uh, based on, uh, again, 20,000 residential homes in Halloween County. Driving, driving in today, the city of Hamilton's housing residential average come in at 575 for for the month of March. So. 
So I guess that, yeah. <laughs> that tells us it's a good place to live in Haldeman. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably note that these are based on uh, 2016 market value assessment. So we're in a four-year cycle. So you'll see that <clears throat> change. <clears throat> Well, and, and maybe just on that point is it's the assessed value, not the sale price of the home value. So this 267 could be your $400,000 home. Right. That's selling for 400000 That's yep. assessed at two sixty. Correct. That's what MPAC assesses it at? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I should also note that we have not yet received um, education rates and so these are based on estimated education rates so that will um, change as well okay and I got and we're stuck so I guess this just shows this is supposed to stay in our slides <laughs> Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Jen to the rescue. So as Mark alluded to, um, this incorporates the assessment changes. Um, it incorporates estimated education tax rates and our municipal levy requirements. Um, the next time we'll talk about tax rates will be with the tax policy decisions, which will be in June. Good job. Ken. Oh, sure. uh, mm -hmm. Through the mayor. Sure. When does the education tax, when does that become finalized that in the summer or does it change every year it hasn't been extremely consistent last <clears throat> year we they provided us with um, preliminary rates in order to um, prepare our budgets and as it turned out those were the ones that they um, ratified at the end of the day um, we've had them we, we have had them this late before and we've had them earlier okay Yes, thank you. I have uh, several questions and I thank you very much for the information and the work that's been done by staff. I'm looking at the preamble and the key financial measures that pretty well highlight what the budget is all about. You've done a lot of work for us in putting that forward. I appreciate that. I'm looking at the, we've experienced a good deal of economic growth and if it goes down to the base where we're at at one percent, is what the budget we're putting forward sustainable in future with that one percent growth in your estimation? So when we brought the budget guidelines report through, we were estimating um, a two percent increase, which um, was based on a two percent two percent assessment growth, um, and we think that for the <clears throat> term of council at least that that is sustainable thank you and uh, I see a lot of uh, I don't fully understand what's going on with that leachate uh, that seems to be highlighted in this that over a period of time we're paying for draining off the leachate from the dumps I would think that would be a diminishing amount is that something that so that's likely something that, that Jeff should answer, but I do know that they are going through a study right now. <clears throat> then I'll, uh, well, okay. I'll either get the answer now while we're ahead or whatever you prefer. What's the preferred option? Right now is fine. <laughs> I am through the mayor. Uh, the long-term <laughs> leachate impacts are currently being evaluated through a study we're completing to see if there's a way to mitigate the long-term financial impact with respect to the treatment and the hauling associated with leachate. And that is a shared cost with Norfolk. Thank you, I, I see it's a, a legacy that we've got that we don't really understand. And that's something the cottagers get as well. They have to pay for that. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. The, the, the last question I have is with regard to the announcement with the grants that are coming out supposedly how is that going to affect this budget did you want to talk to the <coughs> and through your worship and, and i think uh, a cost note the grants i guess is that we you know we've got announcements for 2019 i think the difficulty is is that the future what we don't know is is what's going to happen with those grants moving forward 
Uh, so this budget does incorporate all the uh, grant announcements for 2019 in the impacts. Uh, <clears throat> most of our grants have been held uh, relatively consistent to what we anticipated to get, with the exception of a slight reduction in the UMP funding. Uh, so right now there's not an, uh, like an impact, and then we are getting some additional one-time grants as well. I can't really explain the rationale behind that from the province right now, um, but we are they are putting on us on notice that a lot of the programs are like the OSIF fund, which funds a lot of our capital, the UMP fund, which funds a lot of our operating, is under review for 2019. So what they've essentially say is we're going to hold the, le the levels, but we're reviewing a lot of those programs. So, and, and so that is sort of you know, one of the issues looking forward that uh, we know we've got to keep an eye on as to what the impacts are. Uh, we receive about $14.5 million from the province uh, for operating costs uh, on an annual basis. So it's a pretty significant. So it could only benefit us when we get the grants and how we work with them when we get them? In three words, I think it, 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 it behooves to be very cautious of what we do with the grants and not to assume we're going to get them on every year. I think that's, a, and I think in this document, you'll see a lot of that where we are recommending, uh, you know, utilizing these for long term programs to hedge against the fact that we may or may not have the same funds in the future. Thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> Just further, I think, I mean, Mark's part, I, the idea, we're, we're receiving $14 million in, in, in grant funding, um, but it's it's precarious, and, and based on the, you know, the, some of the talk out of Queen's Park. And so uh, one of our things, and, and we've been, councils have consistently been good at, is maintaining strong reserves. And because <coughs> I think over the next probably two years, I, I think there's going to be some announcements where we may have to uh, phase out some of those things. So we might have to tackle it over a three or four year period um, so that it doesn't affect the tax rate. But we've, we've, we've uh, forecasted this budget out and we've forecasted it out for this term of council. And our sense even past <coughs> the next term of council, we're in a very um, uh, good spot to be able to manage tax rates in the rate of inflation area but it's because of the strong reserves that we have in place that will give provides us more levers to be able to pull should the case be necessary do i understand what you're saying that we may again be penalized because we're in f such good financial shape for some of the grants no actually it's good There's the grants these grants are not based on application uh, they're based on population households and they're st they're steady across all municipalities what you're what I'm saying is because the financial where we are right now and even some of the stuff that we're looking at the uh, the, the uh, new assessment growth that we're suggesting we're adding to our reserves we'll be able to maintain a two percent or inflationary type increase while I think our neighbors and many many municipalities will be looking at more like four to six percent um, in the years uh, to come should the province make those changes because it will have a significant impact on them and they will not have the dollars in place right now to be able to pull reserves because they don't have reserves and so they're paying to play for today where we're paying and, and we have the flexibility for the future to pull different levers on different financial aspects going forward but it has nothing to do because we're in good health these are grants that are are sort of kind of like uh, uh, calculated based on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an algorithm that's the same for all municipalities. Uh, and, uh, and so we're just in, in good shape. So I'm very confident that over the next eight years, 10 years, we should be able to maintain rates of inflation based on where we are on our strength of our reserves. But we just need to be able to maintain <coughs> those reserves so we have that flexibility. Because if the Ford government you know, is talking about pulling back stuff, um, we'll, we'll have the flexibility to be able to maintain that. Thank you. Thank you. So just briefly, just to close, this is the, um, the graph that we normally put on the website, and it just outlines where your property tax dollar is going. It's a good reference for taxpayers. Um, this county does put a lot of uh, money towards its infrastructure in your capital levy. And as well, uh, roads maintenance and winter control is next on the list, and education would be third. Ms. Patterson. Uh, through the chair, I know we're going to spend probably today and perhaps tomorrow going through all these major drivers. So just a quick question to Charmaine. The, the bottom quarter, just above the bold uh, municipal levy increase, where it says base adjustments dash others, are we also going to hit on that, or? So um, this chart, it covers in essence, um, items over $100,000. Okay. 
there is a chart within the treasurer's report that covers items over 25,000. So that has a little bit more detail. So if you refer to that, um, that'll tell you where some of those other base <coughs> drivers were. It could be, could be hydro, could be utilities, could be maintenance and repair on buildings as they age. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> We did just diving in, Mark, or was it, uh, are you? <coughs> yeah, and through your worship, and typically what we do is <coughs> go through page by page. Yep. If there's questions, we'll stop. Okay. Uh, the idea was with, for any amendments and adjustments, we'd wait to the end to do those. So you may identify okay. stuff that we want to <coughs> discuss further or make amendments. We just, it's easier to do them all at the end. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't rescind one once you've sort of passed it. So uh, if, you, if you've got questions, ask the questions. The uh, GMs and the managers are here to answer those. And if you want to, some amendments, we'll sort of track those and then vote on them at the, at the end. <coughs> and I guess maybe just, a, the, everybody's seen the, obviously the appendices in the, in the back because that's where we've broken it all the detail for you to be able to address any, the, any of the questions <coughs> so that it's um, fully transparent <coughs> as, as in past budgets. But we'll go through the page by page, but a lot of those answers are, are there. <clears throat> so, starting with general government, <coughs> on the page, page one. Uh, one, which is an overview, page uh, three, <laughs> Councillor Corbett. I think one of the difficulties I had in looking at the budget was the uh, salaries of various types of people understanding there's been a shift in their uh, management arrangements so i see some percentages go way up some go way down and i think i'm i'm pleased to see it was broken out that with regard to the organization the net cost was such so it does uh, answer my question okay <coughs> page four which is the uh, new initiative um, with respect to the integrity. Is that the integrity commissioner? Councilor Corbett. Corbett. Yeah, I did have a question on that with regard to mm. what does this mean? I know we are supposed to have impact looked af after these things. Uh, is this something we are checking them on or is there something additional? And what comes to mind is the voters list, which is never right, hasn't been right for the last number of elections. We had our own, and you know, we've done it much better, but I'm wondering what is actually this, <coughs> the assessment review? I don't, I don't know whether, are we checking on impact? Uh, three words, but that is correct. This is to hire a third party uh, company to come in and review the uh, uh, return role for assessment only in tax classes as well. Uh, and then make recommendations to and work with MPAC to get any of those uh, amendments done to the rule. We did, we did a pilot in 2018. It was very successful identifying uh, supplementals <coughs> that, uh, you know, if they waited any longer would have fallen off the rule, uh, class changes, comparing properties to other properties. So it's a very comprehensive analysis to, to find anomalies in the rule to try to get additional assessment onto the rule, in some cases sooner, in some cases where it would have been omitted uh, so it doesn't deal with the uh, voters' role or any of the other functions that MPAC deals with. It's primarily assessment, and it, we were very successful in the past in getting additional assessment onto the role. One thing, Your Worship, that I found with regard to the last time MPAC was here, they increased their uh, rate that they were charging above inflation, and yet they were unable to do the job that we wanted with regard to voters' list. Now, I understand they're supposed to be a committee involved to take a look at that and upgrade it. Are we going to make responses to that? Sorry, through your worship, I'll have to maybe ask uh, Evelyn to come up. I, I'm not very familiar with what's going on with the voters' list, to be honest. 
Um, so through the chair, Councillor Corbett, I believe you're making reference to the working uh, group that is to review the, the uh, production of the municipal voters list. Um, we have very little preliminary information at this point in time, so certainly when we get some information based on their review and perhaps recommendations, we would bring that forward for whatever comment is appropriate at that time. Well, I'm glad we're doing a check on it because it tells me that they're not doing their job and we should get information better than what we're getting from them now. If we, they can't make the chains to notify who's owning the property, obviously they're not making that switch as quickly as they should. Thank you. Okay, page six, seven. Mark? Through your worship, and uh, before we move off of uh, page seven, I just want to make a quick comment on here. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, the major drivers, you see the, the total overall budget impact, about 600000 on this page. Uh, one of the major ones is the, uh, the use of hydro uh, legacy fund reserves. Uh, if you recall, we did the policy back in uh, 2018. Uh, there's, there's a, it requires an annual motion of council to utilize any of those funds. So we did utilize 300,000 in the 2018 budget. There is no corresponding use of the hydro uh, legacy funds uh, in the operating budget to date. That would require a motion of council. So, uh, the, so there was 300,000 in 18. There's zero right now in 2019. So that's a 300,000 dollar levy impact that shows up on this page here. So if, if council, currently this, this budget sits at 2.62% increase. If council was to continue with the $300,000 as, as you have in the past in that sort of an uh, annual one-time funding to it, it would bring down your tax rate increase to 2.23%. <coughs> and it's, this is where it shows where that money uh, is, uh, is a hit because it's always one-time funding from that fund. Is, just to the mayor, um, is, Mark, is that, uh, that Hydro Legacy, the three hundred thousand dollars, is that money from principal or is that from interest earned? Growth, growth. And, and, and maybe additional through the through your <coughs> worship and uh, just to qualify, when, when we talked about we did the council orientation, the uses of the hydro the interest, the three hundred thousand is the maximum that can be used for uh, for operating purposes. Okay, page uh, eight. That's Corbett. Uh, with regard to the money that we're receiving, I see it's going into contingency re uh, reserve. How is it being meted out to those various uh, areas where it's supposed to be? Uh, and, and through your worship, uh, well, some of the conditions of use on, with respect to those funds that has to be used on directly for costs associated with the cannabis and cannabis management. Uh, so we, we have there is some small uh, costs identified under public health. Uh, but at, at the intent is as we identify those costs, then we'll take those monies out of the reserve fund to offset those costs. So it's goes. going into those services that it's supposed to be? Correct. Thank you. Page 11. <coughs> this is summary. Page 13. Fourteen. <coughs> Fifteen. Seventeen. <coughs> Nineteen. <coughs> Twenty five. <coughs> Twenty seven. Why it's on it. Councillor Sheridan. This is just a general question to the mayor. Um, where, what can we see 
where I guess we're going to be budgeting for our new and min building um, as far as some of the costs related to that uh, operating of the new building. What pages would we see that on? Or the because I didn't really notice just one item, but I was assuming there'd be quite a few items that might be allocated towards that new building. Yeah, through the mayor, the, the new amend building will be coming on on top in the, in, in 2020. 20. Okay. And so you you don't really see anything significant <clears throat> in here on, okay. on that on that budget. And we'll, we'll be bringing forward at that. I point. guess that's why I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. No. No. But it's but it's a good point because at one point we were targeting being in a little bit earlier. But at this, at this given point, we think for a timing sense of moving forward, it would be there. Is there anything else that I'm missing? That um, the only other thing I would say is, is recognizing that by consolidating, we're going to be uh, eliminating utilities in other places. So there's a offsetting uh, implication. So you will have costs in the new building, but you won't have the same costs. Costs in the older buildings, yeah, like our lease and stuff. Yeah. OK, thanks. <coughs> 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 31. 32. Corbett. And I'm looking at this in another area where we're hiring part-time or a student. Is there any student grants or co-op grants available to offset these? Uh, <clears throat> through your worship, we, we haven't included any grants in here. As, as a whole, we do apply for any available grants from both the federal and provincial governments, but we don't distribute them or, or plan on getting them. So in here, this is the full cost of adding a, a, you know, an additional eight months of a student uh, with no grant funding. Just to clarify, are we going to apply for a grant? Is that what you say? And if it comes, then it'll be... Uh... In, in through your words, as a whole, as a county as a whole, we apply for any available grants. It just it doesn't show up here as a revenue if we get it, and we don't count on it <coughs> specifically for each position. Thank you. Yeah. Through, through the mayor. And the reason we don't is because they, they, they come and go. There is absolutely zero consistency with grants for co-op students and for summer students. And so the, the province or feds will suddenly send an announcement that they've got this one, we can apply, we take advantage of it when they do, but it's never been on a consistent basis. Forty-three. <coughs> Forty-five. <coughs> Councilor Patterson. Yeah, just a question to staff. Um, I think this is an excellent idea. You should recognize your your employees for their dedicated service. I just would like to maybe note that we review this every couple of years as opposed to every 15 years as far as value of gifts. Duly noted. Absolutely <laughs> correct. Mm -hmm. 47. Four, 50. Corbett. Again, I got my answer with regard to the grant. You apply for them, you get them, you take them into revenue, and but you show it here. <laughs> Fifty-seven. 
58. <clears throat> 59. <clears throat> 61. <clears throat> oh. Councilor Lawrence. Yeah. The salaries, wages, and benefits for administration facilities, does that support staff, customer service, and at all our different satellite offices? Through the chair, so the um, percentage of uh, staff, it's, it's actually maintenance staff and lead hands. Um, so it's not supervisory staff, so it's, it's actually staff on the ground. Sixty-three. <clears throat> it's the end of general government. Protection services, page one. It's an overview. <clears throat> page four. <clears throat> Seven. Page nine. That's <coughs> Corbett. Yeah, just some clarification with regard to police services board. There are five members. Where does the other cost show up? I'm not sure I'm understanding the question, Councillor. Charmaine's going to maybe. So the other two members are council members, and they're covered under council. So the the reason that there are three F three oh, okay. other FTEs showing there, the other three appointees. <coughs> Thank you. On that police services board, though, we still don't have the other appointees, right? That's correct. We don't have the provincial appointees. So what happens in, I mean, if this is projecting that we, we have a full slate of members on that board, could be another three, four, five months. We could be, you know, halfway through the year. Did we just put the difference in, back into the reserve? The short answer is uh, if we underspend accounts, mm -hmm. that's exactly what happens. Okay. <clears throat> can't just slash it in half and <laughs> just you don't have to answer that I wasn't about to yeah. <laughs> uh, page 11 Councillor Lawrence uh, with regard to uh, services going up 150,000 from 18 to 19 is that essentially wages like at a cost of increase this is, uh, sorry, through you, Your Worship. Uh, so this is the policing contract, and the policing contract is, is a, essentially a three-part methodology that's used. There's a base cost, which are basically the same costs across the municipality. There's calls for service costs, which are related to how often, and then there's some special costs. And those are the costs that have driven this, this particular budget. So that the increase is just based on that. And there was a report in October last year where this was presented. <coughs> so we have very little ability to influence it other than you know, trying to reduce the calls for service by the uh, policy decisions at the police services board. <coughs> yeah, the good news. On, on it is it's at 2.13 percent, which is state inflation. Whereas in we have had years, a uh, number of years ago, where it was far higher, four or five percent. So this is uh, the the one is the calls on volume that we have that we control. Apart from that, it's a set formula for every municipality in the province that has the contract services from the open. <coughs> Thirteen. Oh, Page thirteen. Thirteen. 
wrong <laughs> went down the wrong way. <clears throat> Fifteen. <clears throat> Sixteen. Seventeen. <clears throat> thought we'd get by that one. No, just quick. No, I just thought I'd provide a bit of an update that they're in the process of uh, starting to uh, interview and or the process anyway for a full-time CEO down there at the NPCA. So I guess that when we're on that page, I just comment on that. Okay, that's Lawrence. <clears throat> yeah, just any reason why like say niagara costs us 118 thousand grc is 166 and then long point conservation story all the way to 281. Just, i'm trying to understand that what i'm because i'm on that one okay well, enough said <laughs> <laughs> I priced I priced yeah. Yeah. Big lunches. <laughs> wow <clears throat> But I guess, I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, I think that each one has a different uh, uh, portion of the county, but they all have their unique challenges. <clears throat> and the conservation authorities have not been funded well at all from the, from the province in the past with grants and that, and they find themselves in a hole. And this is actually the 4.3% from Long Point, uh, and the 3.2 and the 2.6 <coughs> are probably the, some of the lowest rates we've had from the conservation authorities in a number of years. But they're really in a bit of a predicament on sort of the whole, the cost of their services, the lack of reserves, and uh, the on ongoing demands that they're finding themselves in. And municipalities are the ones who are funding it. And on, I believe all the all the the, the, the conservation authorities that we re are represented on, we don't control, or come close to controlling any of the voting interest on any of them. <coughs> Participate on them, but at the end of the day, when that vote takes place. Our portionment for our area is what takes place, and so it's one of those ones that we show under the breakdown of the cost of of, of, of lack of control of, of those things. But it's there's a lot of things based on the history of some of these conservation authorities that, through no fault of their own, are finding themselves in a real predicament to continue services. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Councilor Corbett. Yeah, just to add to that, we did have this discussion with regard to Long Point that they're utilizing their reserves for operational and they had to rationalize the fact that they had to have their operational budget where it should be. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> I think the other thing in there is that the concentration of dollars coming from population on Grand River and, and Niagara are a lot higher than Long point, so sharing that whole pie is 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 more steep for Alden County just because the numbers are just not the same. Gotcha. Just to make sure that it's not because it's time on that board. <coughs> well, we'd never. Question wouldn't want to. We'd want to leave that message out there. <laughs> well, they're watching um, right now. Yeah. Uh, page twenty-one. <clears throat> Twenty three, <clears throat> twenty four. <clears throat> um, just a question to the mayor Does this take into account uh, the potential increase of bylaw officers for what we passed there last week with the uh, no stopping or tow zone area? Or would that be picked up down the road when it's? Um, so in terms of the, the complement of staff, that's not changing. And in terms of project it, projecting the revenues, um, we based it on um, past history. So we really don't know whether that's going to have an effect <coughs> or not. Because for the most part, on the tollway, the person's paying the person who's impounded the vehicle to get it, as opposed to fines. <coughs> yeah, no, I just didn't know if it would be in <coughs> increase the number of hours, whether that would in turn yeah. potentially have to uh, have an extra part-time 
bylaw officer hired? That's what I was asking at. At this point in time, the intent is not to uh, seek additional staff until uh, we have a better chance to assess how it's uh, working out. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, we still, we're still hiring, we're still bringing on a summer. That's correct. Yeah, we still have a summer um, uh, program and uh, certainly uh, on that particular issue, um, we'll be working very closely with the police as well. So, <clears throat> and when do we go, when, when are we able to put forth a change in the contract? When's that process start? It's, this is part of the, um, the QP collective agreement and I believe, Megan, it's later this year. Contract expires at the end of this year. So we, do, we don't have bargaining dates yet. So it'll be at that time that our wish to change the structure of the hours is gonna happen. <coughs> or might not happen, but it'll be our ask. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> You'll remind us? Okay. Page 25. 27. <clears throat> 28. Council Corbett. I know they've <clears throat> had a tremendous amount of uh, work being done in a tree service and I'm wondering with regard to the consulting service, is this a one-op or is it intended to be uh, over a number of years? Uh, through the chair, I anticipate that this will probably be over the next four to five years until we get ahead of the game. Um, and uh, what it um, uh, is for is public inquiries where we already have a backlog list. Um, and the other part of it is um, uh, commercial harvest so with the emerald ash borer right now um, we're getting a lot of requests and that's what this notice of intent you see in the uh, new initiative form on page 29 so uh, what happens is with uh, if we get um, a notice of intent from a landowner that they want to do harvest and a lot of it's the ash um, we have depending on the application either five or ten days to go out there, inspect, and make sure we're happy with what they're doing. It's not even an application process. So to be able to respond, um, this uh, contracted service will help us with that as well. So it's kind of twofold, uh, the backlog of work orders as well as uh, these commercial harvest requests. I think it is of interest to the public is when are we going to in get into the reforestation process? Uh, through the chair, so uh, the reforestation process will start um, this upcoming year, but um, the majority of the work that's happening is still removal. So uh, we're working on uh, the liabilities and, uh, and getting them taken care of, and that'll probably be most of the work over the next couple of years. Um, but there will be some start on, on the reforestation, and over the next five years, we'll see it shift. Thank you. So this new initiative is over and above Adam that we currently have. <clears throat> through the chair, that's correct. Yeah. And, the th and the thought through it, Mr. Mayor, is, is rather than hiring somebody, having that commitment, vacation, sick, and all the other things that go with it, and liabilities is to contract it and, and pull in the services as required and yeah. uh, as needed, be able to reduce or if at, at some point in time. But we're going from, we've gone from really z zero to 60 uh, for the amount of work that we're doing from what we were doing in forestry just probably three years ago. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, but a lot of work's been done. But, and this, and this, we find this to be the most effective way of, of, of the use of dollars. 60, or sorry, 60, 31. <clears throat> Okay, let's take uh, five minutes and we'll reconvene at 10.30 and we'll start with <coughs> the issues. <coughs>
instead of five. Um, page one is the summary of transportation. So page three, Mark, I left something on your computer. You can flip through for me and explain how that works because I still don't get the assessment side of that. But um, you don't have to do it right this minute. I just left it. <laughs> page, uh, sorry, page three. Transportation. Transportation services. Give Councilor Corbett a moment here to. You're too far. You're ahead of yourself. That's so excited I got ahead of myself. Did you? Okay. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll look after him. Oops. That's scary. <laughs> One new guy helping Bernie. He's wearing his Maple Leaf watch yeah. today. One car parade out of control. <laughs> So on page three, we're all good. <clears throat> page five. Okay, Councillor Corbett. Yeah, addition uh, for the uh, capital budget, the roads thing. I, I, again, the gravel conversion. I have to th <coughs> thank you for coming up with an idea. And it's going to complete it, be completed over eight years rather than when we started out, it was 29. So thank you for that, for bringing that forward. Thank you. Page seven. Page nine. <clears throat> Page 11. Oh. Council Lawrence. Through the mayor. Uh, I know it's coming up later, but what is a hot box? <laughs> <laughs> I knew Mike would have the answer for that. <laughs> it's actually a tow behind trailer and it keeps the asphalt warm so they can go out and patch the roads. Okay. Yeah, don't even. <laughs> yeah, the crack ceiling, no, they don't do the crack ceiling with that. But the basically potholes. Oh, okay. Remember your own TV. <laughs> uh, page 13. <clears throat> it's a summary. Page 15. Page 16. <coughs> 17. <coughs> Page 18. There's no changes on the uh, on the employees on uh, on road maintenance, just it's with a, with a six percent increase. It seems a little higher than the other. Is that contract? Is that a contract? Page eighteen. Eighteen. Three years. <coughs> uh, through the chair, there's there's no new staff. No. So. Uh, through the chair, it would just be a redistribution uh, uh, of um, uh, and a reallocation, I think. Well, it's not showing that. That's why I say there's no reorg on that one. Uh, I'll let Mark explain. Okay. <clears throat> and through your worship, and maybe this, uh, and you, ha you didn't see it in <clears throat> early on in general government because it doesn't happen, happen as op often, uh, but for operational staff that work in, within div different divisional, their total wages would get distributed to where they typically work based on actual hours. So <coughs> every year we'll relook at where they worked in the previous years and redistribute those wages to the actual areas. So one year it may have been in road maintenance, uh, it may be winter control, those same staff work in those different areas so that the total complement gets distributed to where it belongs within those uh, areas based on where they've worked. So it's not a re there's no reorg, it's not part of the reorg. It, we just place their wages where they work on an annual basis. So that 6% doesn't necessarily reflect an increase in wage. 
No. Correct. No, no, it doesn't. And I mean, when, and I think looking at uh, you know Char's presentation, you look at the overall drivers. That's sort of where we collapse all the wages. You have to look at the wages as right. a whole. <clears throat> so what it is, is, is uh, through, through Mr. Brett, is, is, is kind of like an activity-based costing. So when staff gets sent out to do work, they're logging their work under coding, and the coding would be for roadway maintenance. And so in a, in a, if we had a heavy winter and uh, uh, winter maintenance might be up, roadway maintenance may be down, right. but bottom line across it would be even. And so then each year we, we allocate it out accordingly. And we do the same thing on the rate budget with uh, water and wastewater. Depending where staff are working, they're, they're coding it to the, to the particular area because in that, in that one in particular, some people are, only, are both water, wastewater. Others are only water or some are just uh, waste. And so uh, where you actually code the work to, uh, so it's really just a coding issue of where the work's taking place. Okay. 19, <coughs> 20, Councilor Sheridan. Uh, through the mayor, and this might be too early to project, I was just wondering, now that we are in, supposed to be in the spring season, um, how was our winter control from, um, I don't know, this winter season, or maybe up until the end of March? It? Has that been calculated? Are we... Over budgeted, under budgeted. If if if, you, if it hasn't been determined, that's fine too. But just thought with the press here and budget time, it might be a good time to ask. Uh, through the mayor, um, I've got some numbers here, but my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> in in a general sense. Um, the numbers, what they show right now, are, are fairly consistent with last year. Uh, and where that lays with the five-year average, um, it's fairly consistent. Um, it's hard to tell because the final numbers aren't in yet. Okay. But uh, considering the winter we had this year, um, the numbers look pretty good compared to last year's. Good to know. Okay. Thanks for the update, Ray. Twenty-one, twenty-three. Oh, I forgot to ask under uh, 20, I noticed that there's a 6% decrease in wages. Did we lose some somebody there? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Um, hmm. Environmental services, <clears throat> page one's a summary, so page three, page five, <clears throat> page seven, To you, Mr. Mayor, I just wondered um, if there was anything, if staff is aware of anything that is coming down from the province in the near future in terms of composting. Like every once in a while I get a question, you know, about, about <coughs> municipal composting and how, you know, how it compares to other municipalities. And I know a lot of people do it on their own. I mean, they get their own containers and they do it on their own. But the question comes up every once in a while about the municipalities involvement <clears throat> these days in the media you see a lot of you know reporting about the amount of food that we throw out as a society and that's a, that's contributing significantly to you know to, to global warming and so forth and I just wondered if is the province looking at initiating something province-wide that would force municipalities to go down that road uh, yeah through the mayor there is an initiative uh, right now it's kind of a population based Initiative. I think 50,000 population is kind of the cutoff before you have to start working on initiating a program of that type. Yeah. So that's why you'll see some of the larger cities and municipalities are already having a kind of a green bin program okay. of that type. But, okay. but, but it is coming down and we're nearing 
we're nearing the point where we have to start right. investigating okay, that. Okay, thanks. And in the meantime, it doesn't stop people from doing it on their own. No, right? absolutely not. Yep. Okay, thank you. Ms. Corbett? Just to add to that, and I've sent the message off to Jeff, and I'm sure other members of council got the information that there's a student uh, from Thompson's Creek School in Dunville. They are concerned with their environment, and they are asking the municipality what we are doing with regard to uh, composting. I understand you're going to take a look at it and respond to them. Yes, through the mayor, I, I will be providing a response. Uh, I just want to do a little consultation with staff that have been possibly involved with these types of uh, requests in the past and just to ensure we have kind of a consistent approach with respect to that. Thank you. Page 10. <coughs> 11. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen. Council Patterson, J just a question or a comment, maybe to staff. And I should have done this myself, and I didn't. I didn't. Do we have any idea what a uh, a private company charges to remove the refrigeration from an appliance. Like I'm just wondering, you know, is it cost effective? Is it? Thank you, through the mayor. Uh, yes, <coughs> yeah, generally speaking, the fees that we're proposing here in this budget are reflective of the private services that are offered throughout the county. Uh, the direction is that the, uh, f the county will uh, provide a location for residents to bring those materials to our <coughs> facility and then we'll have a private contractor come in and, uh, and take those back to his facility for removal. We, won't be, we will not be doing the actual removal on site. Okay. Thank you. Good question. 19. Hmm. 20. <clears throat> Twenty one. <clears throat> Health Services, page five, since one's a summary. Seven. Nine. That's Corbett. I know it's small potatoes, but with regard to this cannabis legislation, why aren't we offsetting this cost uh, with some of that money that we received? Is it a different thing? Uh, through your worship, and we are, I, I, as I indicated earlier, we put all the money into the reserve, and then you can see on page uh, six uh, where we've, we've taken the money back out of the reserve to fund the $1,700 for public health. So we are, we are funding it with the money we receive from the province. So we can reduce it by 2600 Is that what you're saying? Or? Well, uh, again, I'm, your, we're, I'm yeah, not okay. suggesting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Page 11. <coughs> 14. Page 
page 17. Page 19, Alex Corbett. Yeah, maybe we can get an indication what this involved and there's always difficulty with the winter, summer, summer, winter transition. How are we gonna cover that period? People expect us to be out there cutting grass when we're still on the Zamboni cleaning the ice. So through the chair, there's actually um, an operating initiative um, that includes uh, cemeteries it, and it comes uh, further along in our section under uh, parks and so the portion that you see the um, uh, the thirty three thousand dollars is the portion going to cemeteries and um, in actual fact um, we're looking at um, taking on a number of cemeteries uh, in-house uh, uh, that would include Mellick, High Banks, Port Maitland, Inman Road, Diltz, Low Banks, Kirk, Mount Caramel, Briggs, Moot Road, and Cambrill. Um, it always is an issue for us um, in the transition period, trying to get the ice out and trying to get into the cemeteries and the parks and a lot of our riverfront parks that are, you know, there's a lot of logs and different things. So there's a, a number of issues and every year it's a little different. Um, depending on how our teams do, if they do better, it, it's even more difficult for us. Um, but uh, we're looking at increasing um, the, the hours um, uh, over the over the year to an additional 7,000 hours, man hours, um, which uh, a, a portion of that is going to be towards cemeteries. Um, roughly about <coughs> 200,000 will go towards the arena, about 100 towards uh, parks, and um, uh, the uh, around 33,000 towards cemeteries. So um, that additional time will help us in those, especially in those shoulder seasons where we're going from one season to the next, whether it's spring or fall. If I may, there's always that transition period, and I know come Decoration Day in Dundle on June 1st, sometimes the, uh, the grass is not cut and is expected to be at that time, and I want to get some type of insurance that, assurance that this is going to happen, that through this transition you're going to be covered. When the start, grass starts growing, it should be cut. Uh, through the chair, we always adjust our starts, uh, whether it's in-house or um, external services, depending on uh, the growing season and, and, uh, and what spring's like, and we get in there as <coughs> quick as we can. Um, and for sure, any of our major events, uh, uh, we have special plans and, and resources allocated <coughs> to deal with them. Thank you. Okay. Maybe just through you, Mr. Mayor. Having said that, every spring is its own challenge because you can never time it and grass grows much quicker and you do get wet points in the season where it's, you're unable to get in with equipment on surfaces to do it so we're planning we have everything in place and we'll, and we'll do our best but i just know after 30 plus years doing this that every spring is a little bit different than the last and we'll be able to, what we're doing here though is we're putting the resources our own resources who do a quality job into the high profile areas and cemeteries was one of those areas that right across this, this county, I've had nothing but complaints over time. We took over the Hagersville one and we've had nothing but compliments and we've taken, we do to the Dunville one and it's always looks great. So it's just important that our own staff who are dedicated out there doing a, doing a quality job will be on top of it. On my way today from my drive, it was a wealth of knowledge in the news. Um, they announced that uh, Canada was subject to global warming, so that uh, carbon tax that you're paying starting yesterday is going to uh, um, certainly help supposedly with that. But uh, global warming here in Canada, we should expect the, the, the major rains and water floods that uh, we're getting, and we're going to be getting tremendously more water. So I suspect we'll see a lot more grass growing. Are we putting an excuse out there early? Is that what you're <laughs> I'm just I'm just reiterating what I heard on the news today. Oh, and we're going to get heat waves too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, social services, social family, page... Five. Council Corbett. <coughs> that one's a summary. 
Just a uh, general question on social services. Are we seeing some of these reductions as a result of uploading from the province? And uh, I'm concerned with regard to some of the social services and, and some of the housing. What's going on there? Can anybody explain to me? It's, it, uh, go, Kathy. Um, through the mayor, I was just going to say that Marlene Miranda is scheduled to be here at 1 o'clock today if we need her to be here to answer She's going to be questions. here by herself? <laughs> yeah, she may be uh, at the rate we're going. Um, so she, if you, I can get that answer for you if we are finished by 1, uh, but I don't have it for you right now. Shall we kick this section to the curb then and come no, back No, no, Grandview again? Lodge is in this section, oh, so okay. we don't want to kick yeah. it to the curb. <laughs> I, think through the mayor, I, think, I think some of it is funding, but I think some of it's just, it's just a, a good eye. We're being extremely fortunate with uh, Marlene Miranda coming on with us. Uh, the transparency of the information, the, the level of cooperation, has never been as strong as, as, it, as it has been uh, since she's come on. And uh, there's a real, um, I think, uh, a, a nice connection between both municipalities when it comes to this. And I think just looking at it and the direction from council about the whole 75% funded programs, 50% funded programs, 100% funded, and how much, what percentage we're in. She's taking it extremely serious, and she's uh, she's really looking at the, what's the what's the best for the counties and, and still providing a quality service. So I really think a lot has to do with her management and her approach to, to doing it. Thank you. Page seven. It's a summary. <coughs> I just have to ask uh, Jennifer with regard to the uh, increased allotment for P PSWs and others, are you noticing any change in terms of the service and the number of people who are not uh, able to show up for work and coverage of uh, staff? Through the mayor. we. Um, started this one-time initiative to convert part-time hours into full-time hours, full-time night shifts, hoping that we would see a change <clears throat> in attendance at work during the night shift and a reduction in overtime costs. Unfortunately, the time period, um, circumstances happened where the time period wasn't uh, long enough to see a substantial change, <clears throat> plus we had some um, uh, unforeseen absences due to illness and surgery, so that sort of, um, impacted uh, the stats that we were looking at. What we did notice by doing that is the people who did accept the full-time night shifts, their sick rates decreased, their absenteeism improved. So, or, or sorry, their absenteeism uh, decreased. So it, we do feel that we're on the right track by creating these four full-time night shifts. Um, but across the whole sector, again, staffing is an ongoing issue. It's something that we struggle with every year, um, and it's something that we continue to pull out initiatives like this to look for improvements and ways to have staff attend work on a regular basis. Thank you. So we're going to have to wait for the good news statistics? That's right. They're coming. Yeah. <laughs> 14. Did I say that one already? Councillor Patterson? Um, page 15, and just to tag on to what Councillor Corbett mentioned, I'm just, I guess, being a bit smart, but just how it's written up in the explanation, I totally agree with the consistency of, of four nurses working the night shift would probably be preferred service, but where we see the was placed in their preferred shift would be less, less likely to call an absent. Being an old shift worker for many, many years back, you might have one out of four saying that's her preferred shift, but at least they like consistency. Sixteen. <clears throat> Seventeen. Yeah. 
Councilor Lawrence. Through the mayor. Um, with regard to laundry and linen, I salaries and wages here at uh, just over a quarter million dollars does do we also have a contracted linen service as well or is this strictly the Grandview looking after all of that themselves uh, Grandview looks after all of the laundry and linen within the uh, within the home um, under the legislation we have certain requirements that we have to meet and so that is what you see here and I, and I think one of the the uh, the, uh, the uh, um, particular things with uh, uh, with a long-term care home with this is all the personal belongings so I suppose is this has been raised as, as you know could you uh, bedding could you could you, uh, uniforms that kind of stuff could you source it and some of that you, you you could but because of the amount of, of, of wash that takes place for <coughs> clothing and all personal items, <coughs> items that are very particular to the home um, it that has to get done, well it doesn't have to get done inside but it's very difficult to outsource, and so that's why we've maintained it inside. Councillor? On that, um, and maybe the CEO or Kathy or Jennifer can uh, comment, don't we also take on the service of the Cheshire um, building and handle the linen for them as a, basically an enhanced service and a bit of a savings? Yes, we do. So uh, you'll see that coming up. It's on the second to last page oh, okay. of the interview section. There's a section on the capabilities, um, which is uh, Maple Grove Place now. And we do provide the services for laundry there, and we charge them back. So you'll see that the bottom line is a um, net savings. Okay, good. Thanks. So 18. <clears throat> Nineteen. <clears throat> Twenty. So there's a savings. There. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Housing, page four. Page five. Page six. <coughs> Recreation. Page three. Mm -hmm. Page seven. Sorry, 10, 10 or 11. Skipped over 10. That one's good. So 13. <clears throat> 15. <clears throat> okay. Council Patterson. Just a quick question, I guess, to Phil on the ball diamonds. This takedown cost 97 bucks. Is, is that basically, can you explain that? Is that like doing the lines or the infield grading or what's that charge for? Well, Sheila, come on. Sheila, 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 Sheila give you the, sorry. Yeah, she'll give you the. <coughs> uh, through the mayor, it's um, basic prep work and it, it's the, the, um, the line work and the um, uh, leveling of the infield. Okay, um, and not to dig down or whatever, but is this like per game or is, that, is this for the day if there's a tournament or every time is run? It, it reflects the true cost for the day. The day. 
the day. Okay, thank you. Good question, though. Just sure. Um, the lines are done by the, the organization. You know, you, we're not, staffing's not doing the lines for the ballparks. Through the mayor, um, this is for diamonds that the, the county does look after, not the field management groups. Oh, okay. So there is a, okay. Um, that's where I'm disconnect. Okay, that's fine then. Yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> we didn't have groups that did that. 17. sooner <laughs> 24 5 28 it's a summary so 29 Corbett just a general comment I think for uh, thanks staff for coming up with the plan and program to uh, increase the services at the local libraries I know in Dunville they got a number of uh, computers there that seem to be occupied full-time and to add an additional computer and to uh, uh, have Additional hours is something good for our, our community, especially when we'll be taking out the services at uh, Forest Street. It, it'll provide that hub and it'll help uh, teach our, our citizens how to get online 24 seven. So thank you for preparing for that. Okay, I got Councilor Metcalf. <clears throat> Again, uh, I see the increase in hours in uh, our local branch here in Cayuga. But I also notice a decrease in, in wages of uh, close to $50,000 with more hours open. I wonder how that uh, is going to offset that or how that comes about. Um, I don't see the CEO of the library with us today. Um, so we'll have to get you that, that answer. I'm not quite sure. I know we've gone through it and he, we, he has met with <coughs> our uh, financial analysis. Uh, Diane, would you happen to know that, that answer? Yeah. No, okay, no problem. No, that's fine, that's fine. But I know um, uh, we've gone through it, but that's an answer I'll have to, I'll have to get, I'll have to get you. I, I don't understand why Paul's not here, but there might be something that's come up. I'm grateful that the hours are gonna increase and I just, don't understand how they can increase with a fifty thousand dollar decrease in budget. So I just I'm just looking at salaries here, uh, page thirty four, and I'm not I'm not sure what number. So oh, I, I'm on twenty nine here. Administration. So maybe I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. So if you go to page thirty four, library branch of salaries, it's an increase of one hundred twenty three thousand. Um, and salaries, wages, and benefits. Yes. And I, I and so, um, so and so at the end of the day, it's a hundred forty-two thousand dollar increase in in that one. So that's probably the weight. That's probably the. <coughs> wage yes. Yeah. I'll try to find out the other answer for you, uh, Councilman. Well, I Metcalf. think the other one was administrative costs. Yes. Yeah, so actual. It, yeah. it might be just the the, the, the flip flopping of, of wages. Mm -hmm. But it is an increase, but as, you, as, 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 as councillors have mentioned, what it does do is it fulfills our commitment of the community hubs. It expands the hours across all the libraries. 
Um, and it's one of those ones that um, I think we'll assess as time goes on. I think there's some locations where I think it's quite obvious that it's, it's going to be um, uh, straight good news and, t and take up. And there's some of the locations that uh, there, there might not be the express need at the end of the day. The experience might not uh, require it. And then those ones in, pa in future years, we'll look at reducing it to make sure that we've, we've hit the fine point. But what we want to do here, given the, the changes we've made as an administration, is to ensure that off the, off the, the, the hop, we're, we're fulfilling the, the, the commitments we made to uh, have service and more service than we have today, weekend service. Um, in these library locations and uh, the relationship with the libraries and the municipal staff have been going really well. Uh, Councilor Sheridan on that? Yeah, on that. Um, with the delay, Don, of, of our CEO or our admin building, though, are these hours going to be going on currently shortly, this new hours, or are we going to wait until the admin building is open in our. We, so that's what I want. Good yeah. point. Yeah, our, 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 um, our preface, and we haven't made an announcement yet, is to open up sooner than when the library actually, the new building takes place. And so we're in the midst of that right now. We've uh, visited all the locations, looked at the design of the sort of drop-in area signage and, and uh, 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 desk and furniture and that kind of stuff. And so the expectation is to have it uh, opened up in the fall. Okay. And uh, be prepared and so that, uh, maybe Kathy, if you want to highlight it even further. Uh, well, just that basically I don't have anything extra to add other than we, our target is the last quarter of 19 to start opening the hubs. We have some staff yeah. training to do as well that will be significant. And I'm assuming there'll be some announcements and whatever that way too? So actually the community guide um, for spring and summer, we are putting an ad in that as well. And we'll start, we'll start communicating and having a marketing plan so that the public is aware of when they'll open and what services they can receive there versus what they can receive in the new uh, administration building. Excellent. Great idea. Um, and just on Councillor Metcalf's question regarding the salaries, so um, I think you were looking at the 2019 base column and the reduction there. Yeah. So there was a temporary branch coordinator that ended at the end of um, last year, and there's a new uh, initiative to make that position to have another branch coordinator to come in so that the total 19 budget isn't a reduction. Um, it's just that you're, if you look at the third column that I think you were looking at, that's where the reduction shows the position going out. 29. New initiative shows it coming back in. <clears throat> On page 29. 29. Yes, one. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, on page 31, and, and since the library chair is not here, perhaps Don, it, it, I'm just, I guess the question is a bit of history as far as the initiative. When I read this, I don't know what happened in 2018, but in hindsight, are we saying we eliminated one position, we saved a wee bit of money, but then we put a workload on a whole bunch of other people and realized, uh-uh, we can't do this, so now we're creating another position? Like, is it kind of, the titles have changed, but is it the same it's type just, thing? It is, it, right. it is. And it's one of those ones where they've, we've, we've, they, they made changes, and at one point in time, and this is where this explanation could have got, as wonky as it is, it could have got way w w worse. Back, they, they got rid of a position and thought they would do a position. They went with an outreach worker, and, which has worked out really, really well. But you're absolutely correct. Then they had this contract position. They were tr trialing it. They found that it works, but they're eliminating, so now they're eliminating it and creating it into a full-time uh, basis. Um, where you had the, uh, the, the CEO and you had a deputy uh, in there who was doing a bunch of, uh, of, of work. Uh, when Paul first took the position, he thought he could handle the whole, the whole thing essentially. And he's, you know, he's quickly found out that it's not possible. And so that's where he's reducing this one position and adding this in for a little bit extra cost, but um, to fulfill that, that requirement. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. <clears throat> Thirty 
36. <coughs> Ms. Patterson. Just a positive comment. It's great to see we're increasing the hours. <coughs> I see the term in quotation marks are open, typical business hours. That's great because every time I went, I went on the non-business hours. So it's great to see. Thirty-seven. Forty-one. Where are we buying three phones for uh, three hundred bucks? <laughs> I want I want to go there for my kids. Yeah. Burners. Yeah. Your Worship, this isn't the capital cost. This is the uh, the operation. The operate, okay. Where do I get three phones for three hundred dollars on operating? <laughs> <laughs> I hear that next question coming. I'm going back to Morse code. Uh, Forty-three. Hmm. This is a summary. Forty-five. Six. Seven. <coughs> Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Fifty-one. <coughs> Fifty-three. <clears throat> Fifty-five. Planning. Page three. So Craig, I, I guess I should ask the other question because it was similar on the other uh, um, budget. If our 18 current is showing on this case 243, why are we budgeting 230? <clears throat> um, because during the reorganization, uh, it, I was adjusted to uh, include the deputy CEO costs, so my salary went up. Oh, so this is so this is you going down. Uh, this is this is me, my salary going up as a result uh -huh. of the reorganization. But then, but nineteen showing a thirteen thousand dollar decrease on the base. Page three. So you're you you need to look at the um, the nineteen base to the to nineteen total budget. So there's a thirteen thousand or so you okay, so you're breaking it out and then <coughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. But we're still for the eight, yeah, I guess the, the question still two hundred dollars less. <laughs> <laughs> but, and the eighteen forecast it was two forty three. Yeah. So it just Sure may? Um, through your worship. The forecast right now is just a forecast and there are some final adjustments that we do have to make. Um, and in looking at that, that's likely one of the places that requires a, a further adjustment. Paul we here. do have some year end entries. So our forecast, although um, we've done the best we can, there are some entries that may be outstanding. Okay, so if I go back to page 53 under recreation, it kind of, Kind of shows the same. It, it, the, the current forecast on 18 is at 219, and then the 219 total budget is 199. Extra hours. That that one could be a little bit different. Um, they may also have have um, had the ability to get some extra fees for their programs, and so had some extra hours. 
that were allocated there as well. You can see the fees are higher than the budget as well. Right. <coughs> Ken has saved all his questions for Craig's part yeah. of the budget here, so just oh, yeah. give yeah. me a while here. But. <laughs> really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Page five. Page six. Page seven. Page ten. Eleven. Six. <clears throat> I was going to say, like, <coughs> normally we'd be breaking right now after finishing up with Martin. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I, I got It's too easy, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> I got to stick up for a f fellow Bruin, and you know what? He's taken too much abuse. His position. It's now, he's not the treasurer any longer, so. <laughs> I'm going to be sticking up for him. <laughs> so, um, I was going to ask, oh, Councillor Lawrence. Oh, sorry, through the mayor. Uh, is that sticking up for a Bruin fan or a fellow Dunny? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can get my knuckles wrapped here, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I had a couple things that we missed that I want to ask questions on, and so wherever it goes, please. Uh, first part. <laughs> what page are you asking? On well, I'm, I'm not sure because I got it in my notes, but the one was with regard to this removal of summer ice at 9250. Is that a cost to us that um, taking the summer ice out or leaving it in, I mean, in Caledonia, I'm assuming? I can answer sort of generally. Um, so there was a report, I guess it was last year's budget. It was last year's budget, council decided to um, maintain for the next three years summer ice. There is a small um, cost to the municipality to do to keeping that in. Uh, we do get some some revenues, um, but uh, overall, it's 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 not us. It's it costs us yeah, to keep it in. Yeah, I figured that. The other one was I noticed um, hydrant rental. <coughs> do we rent our fire hydrants? <laughs> uh, and through your worship, what that represents is the charge back to the water wastewater budget. Uh, for operational costs related to fire services, and that's pretty consistent. And actually, it's just indexed annually on, on an annual basis. And we last time we did review it at the rate study back in 2013, and in the methodology and how we allocate it back as well. Okay. That's Patterson. Yeah, sorry, I missed it. My fingers weren't turning quick enough to keep up with you. Um, I want to just go back to page 22, 23. This. Um, which section? Oh, Which sorry. section? Oh, the very last section that you, we just covered. Right. So the community uh, beautification program. 
I think it's an excellent program. I think we have to keep it up. I'm just going, I won't name any of the players, but a couple of comments were made at um, a Jarvis Board of Trade meeting saying, you know, we should be concentrating more on how to attract business to our downtowns instead of how to make it look nice. It's kind of a two-edged sword. If our downtowns aren't appealing, we're not going to get new businesses coming in. And I think a lot of these communities that are doing this are being proactive, and in Jarvis's case, Craig and his team are coming to discuss it with the board. So, I mean, I think it's a really, really good help and uh, an advantage to whether it's a chamber or board of trade to have these programs and keep them going. Thanks. Okay, anything else on that? Uh, so, Craig, I was going to ask you about my uh, little pet project with the uh, youth uh, community um, uh, <coughs> committee that, uh, that we were going to start working on, and uh, Sheila actually sent me a, a, an email today uh, highlighting some of the, or start, that she had some of the terms of reference, and so, so I'll sit with Sheila, and uh, we'll get the terms of reference uh, hammered in, and then we'll bring that back uh, to council at probably our next uh, CIC. I assume it, if it's fair to say, Sheila, we should be able to have it to present to CIC next, our next round, the terms of reference. Or is that getting lofty? To the mayor, um, I think um, May may be a, a okay. better a better time so and give us sufficient rounds. time to sort of vet it a little more. Okay. So, I'm sure. Well, I guess because we're done a little earlier than anticipated, um, <coughs> I've been I've been uh, thanked for our initiative that we took out uh, was a previous councilor that wanted to put in these flashing signs of for speeding. If there was an uptake um, this year for a few more other locations, moving forward, we would it would wait to the 220 budget, or like would it impact operating? I'm not saying it is going to happen for sure, but I know there's a area kind of in the eastern portion of uh, <laughs> Dunville that's asking for it because of the heavy traffic on North Shore. So I don't know if something like that would. A couple signs coming up. Would I wait till the fall, or I suggest you meet with your fellow Bruin over there at uh, another time and and have that discussion. <laughs> I can easily do that. No, I just didn't know if any other councillors were asked about that because I think it has re reduced in some speeding. I think to to follow up pro and <coughs> protocol process. I think if there's a motion that you want to put forward, then it would come forward and then that it would follow into next year's budget. That'd be great. And if and, and, and through the mayor, and if and if there was a demand and there was a, an express thing, then we put the motion forward. We look for where can we find funding and, yeah. and, and go okay. forward. Well, I guess they, they just know it's it's more of a touristy area. There's a lot of motorcycles, a lot of bikes, there's a lot of tra traffic in that area. So they're seeing maybe the results in other areas and wondering about their area. So that was why I thought I'd bring it up. Think, think through the mayor. Things can happen during the year, and things do change during the year, and so. It's, because it's not done today, it won't preclude it. And in addition, uh, just a reminder on the, uh, the, uh, the council term of priority, <coughs> which we hope to have uh, uh, fully vetted through council by the June break, is the, the, some of the funding that we've put aside as reserves, we'll be able to use maybe some of that funding towards you know, whether it's uh, uh, studies or whatever we need to do to fulfill the, 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 uh, re the request of, of council, we'll be able to go back and do that and come forward with a report in the, in the, you know, late in the fall kind of thing once okay. we have a plan on how to begin addressing council's priorities. That's Corbett. Yeah, if I may, I thought we had a plan with regard to the signage that so many this year and we'd move ahead with the number. Is that not the case? Or does it have to be visited every year? Um, through your worship, I, I'm going to have to go back and because it's something I inherited um, and go back to the report. <laughs> there is a temporary one that moves around too and you might want to perhaps look at trying that and see yeah. whether it has any effect before you go any further. Uh, great idea and I can follow up with that with Ray, Ray did you, were you, gonna, I wanted to add to that. <clears throat> Uh, through the mayor, it just so happened uh, yesterday I was talking with Phil Carter with the OPP uh, about this initiative. Um, he seems to think that there is a plan in place. He's going to search for the report and, and, and get it back to me so we can have a look at it and I can bring it forward. 
Um, he thought that it eventually expanded to, I think, double what the signs are now in the county, four per ward. But he wasn't certain of that, so when he gets it back to me, I can bring it to Tyson or Craig and okay. Okay. forward. Okay. Eight total. Yeah, through the mayor. Um, yeah, I, I echo Councillor Shurton's sentiments about them. I, I think they're fantastic. They work. <coughs> um, I know personally when I hit it and I'm going too fast, I immediately slow down. Um, if we can uh, increase them, I know I've got four to six places that would take them in our in Ward Three immediately that they're needed and would help as well. So I agree with your sentiments 100%. Yeah. Okay. So Charmaine, you have a uh, number of motions. So we just have a couple of motions that, as a result of. Um, the approval of the new initiatives, we need an amendment to the capital budget specifically for um, the student in finance, the student in IS, and the new initiative in facilities and parks. Yeah, if I may, while we're waiting with regard to uh, the hydro divestiture whatever reserve fund are we going to have some type of an idea what's going on and how we're we may allocate those funds or are those funds in the budget now we we uh, we've prepared a motion and we'll be introducing that motion there's been a request to bring a motion forward to utilize the three hundred thousand dollars and so we have a that's motion for the today. gravel road converter or something no no, that's just uh, offset, uh, uh, one time offset on the uh, on the on the tax budget. One one time offset on the tax budget. The three hundred thousand from the hydro. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Seven hundred thousand from that reserve. Right. Okay. No. Okay. So uh, I'm going to read off these motions. Uh, looking for a seconder or a remover and a seconder. This is uh, reference page general government 31 to 35 as approval of the new initiative related to the new position of permanent part-time co-op student finance requires the purchase of a portable two-in-one computer and software uh, totaling 3,500. The following addition to the capital budget is required as follows, uh, $3,500, and that the revised budget as outlined be approved. So moved, Councillor Corbett. Then I have a question. Okay, seconded Councillor Medcalf. Go ahead, Councillor Corbett. If I may, is that? Already included in the 2.6% uh, increase, or is this additional? Uh, through your worship, and all, all the capital amendments are included in the 2.663, yes. So it doesn't affect that 2.6%? Correct. Thank you. Okay. So, sorry. The re and through the mayor, the reason we, it's cumbersome, the reason we do this is so that it, it, instead of approving it in the capital budget at that time, is to ensure that council's okay with it in the operating budget, and as soon as that operating budget's done, then it allows us to go back and revisit the capital budget to do these ones, as opposed to approving them all then, uh, but unsure that the position's actually being supported. But it's all included in the funding that's being presented. Yep. 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 All those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. So we'll move in a seconder that with reference to uh, pages general government 47 to 51 as approval of the new initiative related to the new position of permanent part-time co-op student information systems requires the purchase of a portable two-in-one computer and software totaling 3,500 uh, which will be added into the capital budget and that the revised budget as outlined be approved. Councillor Shurton. Councillor Lawrence, all in favor? And that's carried unanimously. And this is with reference to pages recreation, cultural services, page nine to 10, 
as approval of the new initiative related to the staffing resources changes facilities parks cemeteries and forestry operations requires the purchase of a pickup truck trailer and mower totaling 75,000 the following addition to the capital budget is required and that the revised budget as outlined be approved moved Councillor Delamani seconded by Councillor Patterson all in favor and that's carried unanimously and a mover and a seconder that a one-time initiative for funding from the hydro legacy reserve fund be added to the 19 tax supported operating budget in the amount of 300,000 moved councillor Medcalf seconded councillor Corbett I want to discussion councillor Sheridan so it's currently not in the budget so we're we adding it to reduce it yes so so, yes. so, so what's the rationale I thought we were trying to wean ourselves off this well that's that's why it's up for a vote um, the, the, the the idea behind it is that um, if we were to wean ourselves off of it uh, there would be a three hundred thousand dollar impact on this budget which is there right now that's why it's 2.62 yeah um, and you could go at 2.62 and and that call it a day um, it's the history from it uh, was that we did receive a dividend when we owned hydro and we uh, we had that we always put those monies into reserves um, which in a roundabout way reduced the tax impact um, and so in the past councils have dis, uh, have chosen to use some of the monies that are derived from the the sale and, and this is purely from the interest so principal completely protect it um, and this is a small portion of the of the interest that we make off the off that money and council uh, set forth in the policy that they, the maximum they could use was three hundred thousand dollars to uh, protect that to protect those funds. And so this is absolutely a decision of council whether or not you want to continue to use the one-time funding from the hydro. And each year you have that decision to make. And so there's no right or wrong decision. You could leave it at a two point six two. And, and move forward, or you could choose to do as past councils have done and use the uh, three up to three hundred thousand dollars to reduce that and bring it down to a two point two three percent increase. Well, no, knowing that we have a new initiative for a community uh, projects, uh, which is going to be using this hydro legacy fund and the interest. I will not be supporting it. Um, there's going to be some bigger projects coming forward where these uh, funds can be used. Um, we already know what the end result is today. We've seen it on the average tax bill. So um, 2.62 and, and keeping that funds that we can use for bigger projects, uh, that's the reason I won't be supporting this, uh, adding the 300000 onto it. Councilor Corbett? Yeah, I do support it, and it goes and helps those people with regard to their taxes, uh, and that's what... They expect that they receive that money, at least they can use some. I fully understand the capital outlay that ex expected with regard to, I'm, I'm thinking of the indoor swimming pool, but we need some information back on that as well before we go ahead. Or I hope in here we've got that money to conduct a study to see the needs assessment of it. So, Councilor Metcalf? Yeah, just moving forward, if you're going to wean it off, then maybe next year 200 and the year after 100, and then get down to some point where you're down to zero. But to take the 300,000 hit in one year, I would see if you're going to wean it off in increments or slowly, then fully, completely off. Mr. Mayor, I'm, go I'm going to support the motion because <clears throat> we've, you know, we've invested the the. Uh, uh, the base dollars that we got as a result of the sale and we said that we would use the interest I think in, in a balanced way I mean we're putting some of it away for for future potential large projects we're doing that already uh, but but as in the past and you and I know from being members of the hydro board we did take some of that uh, that annual dividend and use it in, in terms of tax reduction they, to do it this year it gets us back closer to the rate of inflation give some of that money back to the ratepayers that used to own the asset. And I, and I think that's fair. I mean, we're not being out <coughs> we're doing it in, in, in any way, shape or form. We're, we are still putting money aside 
but it gets us back closer to the rate of inflation. It gives people a break on their municipal taxes. We can afford to do it, and I think I think we should do it because I think we're doing it in a balanced approach. So I will support it. Councilor Patterson. Yeah, through the chair, and just I guess to add to Council Damani's um, points, I will be supporting this, and actually just throwing out a, a comment. I don't have enough knowledge to make a decision now or moving forward, forward without talking to our financial people. Um, I don't, on principle, don't like the idea of weaning ourselves off of this in years to come. I would actually be open to discussions to see if we increase that number because I think we're here to kind of help our residents with the burden of this. So in short, I would be supporting the $300,000 towards it. Uh. Well, I, I, I can see the argument on both sides, and I guess I, I have to kind of uh, I echo Councillor Delamani's comments. I guess from the perspective that uh, I think there's a, there's a balance that we can still meet both, both of those uh, uh, demands. Uh, what's, what's in front of us today is certainly the, the budget the idea of a recreational facility of some sort uh, is, is still uh, a couple of years down the road but before we're, we're, we're actually faced with some hard costs and, and uh, a lot can change between now and then and, and I think that uh, you know, we've made some, some very aggressive decisions in the past few years with respect to capital and our roads and and, and tree trimming and all of these other programs that we've added along the way and if we can reduce some of that burden from from those that are uh, paying for it uh, today then I think it's uh, incumbent upon us and at the same time with with that utility I think it was a promise uh, made uh, over the course of that process that uh, that we would protect the capital but that there still would be some benefit uh, to the taxpayers as it is their their funds, it's their money, and, and uh, beings that we've been able to invest it uh, rather wisely and gain a reasonable return, we should be able to pass some of those returns off to the, to the, to the payer, taxpayers. So, so that's why I'm going to support it, not to suggest, Councillor Shurton, that your argument is, uh, is, in, is wrong. I, I, I think it, it has a point, but I, I, I do think there's, a, there's a certainly a, a valid reason to go that route today. And just, I don't want, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but down the road, if we ever do go that route with an indoor pool, don't think that that in, increase of operating costs won't be higher than the 300,000. So I'd rather put it away like a squirrel and use it down the road when the pool is in place. So if you think that that pool is not going to be uh, cost effective, you're, you're, we're fooling ourselves at this table here today. Yeah. Well, they don't, it, we know there'll be an actual cost to it, but the cost will be a, a burden that we'll take on at that time after the process goes through vetting it through the public and the public taking that burden on. So with that, uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That's carried six to one. I don't have any others. Well, we got, we must have a number. Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, I need a mover and a seconder that the treasurer's report within the 19 draft tax supported operating budget document be received as information and that as a result of financial reporting amendments under the public sector accounting board guidelines, expenditures for amortization expenses related to capital assets, post-employment benefits and solid waste, landfill closure and post-closure expenses as outlined in the treasurer's report have been excluded from the 19 tax supported operating budget. So I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Corbett. Councilor Medcalf, all in favor? Just a comment, oh, Your Worship. Sorry. There's those who always think that water and sewer is part of the tax system. It is a separate system and paid by the users. Is that not true? Um, well, I, I know the answer to that, but we'll let yep, that, yeah. staff answer that one. Through the chair, that's correct. User pay. 
So all in favor? That's carried unanimously. Mover and a seconder that the 19 draft tax supported operating budget document be received and that the 19 tax supported operating budget uh, as amended be approved at a net levy of $67,225,340 and that any surplus deficit from 19 public health be transferred to or from the contingency reserve and that any surplus deficit from 19 social assistance be transferred to or from the social assistance stabilization reserve and that the net surplus deficit from 19 child care be transferred to or from the social assistance stabilization reserve <coughs> and that any net surplus deficit from 19 social housing be transferred to or from that social housing reserve and that any surplus deficit from 19 library operations be transferred or from the library reserve fund and that any net surplus deficit from the remaining 19 tax supported operation be transferred to or from the contingency reserve and that the balance within the tipping fee rate stabilization reserve at December 31st, 2018, be transferred to the Waste Management Reserve Fund. <coughs> at the tipping fee rate stabilization reserve be closed as at December 31st, 2018. And that the <coughs> user fee bylaw number 1986-18 be amended to reflect all new and revised user fees as included in the budget. And that the budget for Hagersville Business Improvement Area be approved with a levy requirement of 14,000 and that the budget for Dunville Business Improvement Area be approved with a levy requirement of 23,500 and that the budget for Caledonia Business Improvement Area be approved with a levy requirement of $47,950. Move. Oh, Councilor Mark. Uh, Your Worship, just sorry to interject before you move this motion. I did want to bring one more thing to Council's attention that uh, could possibly be amend amended today and, re and reflected in the amended amounts. It doesn't have a, le a levy impact per se. Uh, there was an announcement by the province uh, late March, and I, I sent an email to Council on uh, March 25th uh, about some additional one-time uh, uh, operating funds available from the province. Uh, the province announced it uh, very, <coughs> very quickly with very little details. Uh, in short, it was for small rural municipalities to improve service delivery and efficiencies. And the, the county was awarded a, a one-time unconditional grant of $725,000. Uh, if, if it behooves council, it, it may be appropriate at this time to pass a resolution as to what we're gonna do with those funds. Staff do have some uh, recommendations what to do with those funds. Uh, so they do fall within the operating budget. Uh, we could amend it afterwards if council doesn't want to do it today. Uh, but we do have, I, I did provide some information and do have some recommendations on uh, what to do with the, the funds that were received. So I, I, I um, he, and we I sort of spoke verbally. These are the one-time funds. So when we talked about the council priorities and needing funds at that point that we might need for studies, whether it's the pool, the, the transportation, uh, uh, the, we, are, we are considering using these funds. The funds were given to us on the basis uh, for efficiencies with government efficiencies. And so staff's uh, uh, sense was that we earmarked them towards the business application software program that we're already in the midst of so that we could clearly articulate to the province, you gave us the money, <coughs> used it on something, yes, we've already funded, but we've used it against that program for the efficiencies, which will then free up that money so when we get into the council priorities, and there would definitely be uh, studies and the, the feasibility study for the pool, that we'd be able to use these monies for that at that time. And so at, at that time, we won't have to tax anything more for it because we'll be able to go in to use these funds. And so that was the, the concept of it is use them right now, earmark them towards the business application software that we're already currently doing. Be able to articulate that to the province that that was for uh, customer service efficiencies and, and efficiencies within it meets their criteria and then take that money that was freed up and have that sitting there now available so that when we get into the priorities we have uh, money that we can articulate and not have to tax for moving forward oh, sure. so if we agree with that approach what do we do with mark's Mark suggestion uh, so we, we I use do, it i do have a recommendation and and Don's right, it says we're going to use the money for those business application software projects that the county's already, fund, like we were going to fund ourselves moving forward and then take that savings from that, 
we'll have 725,000 available to use for council priorities when that uh, comes forward in June. But you did also mention in your first preamble that it may impact our final levy amount. Yes or no, will it or won't if we take this approach? That's what I'm confused with. Sorry, sorry, through the chair, through the worship. It won't impact the levy, but what we'll do is put it into the operating budget as a, as a grant and then a transfer to the IT reserve. Right, and then we'll use those funds, and then the money that was going to go into the IT reserve, we'll have that available for, for future council use. Sure, I understand. Thank you. Sorry, to be clear. So we want this motion now? If I could, yep. before the one you read earlier, sorry. I just wrote, read all that one. I'm not reading it again. <laughs> I didn't interrupt you, but you were in the middle, and I didn't want to. <laughs> sorry. Council Corbett? I'll move the motion. Hey, that's for I, all the comments. I got a yeah. question. <clears throat> okay, so seconder for this motion. Councillor Lawrence, <coughs> go ahead. If I may, the, the budget information that we have before us would indicate we have a surplus of about $1 million. I'd like uh, some comment from staff. To me, that uh, shows that we've lived within our means and on the go we had over mm -hmm. 600 capital projects that we're looking at. So. My compliments to uh, our staff for looking into that. I know we're able in another budget to make some allocations of uh, costs due to the fact that <clears throat> many of those uh, budgeted items come in under, so you weren't asked asking more money from us. So you always hear the negative when a certain percentage, probably four or five percent of those items go over budget, but in this case, 95 percent are on or within budget or under budget, so that's a credit to staff, and we take the uh, some of the glory for it, but it's, it's you that does that, so thank you. Just a comment on the, where we are with regard to the surplus. <clears throat> and through your worship and correct our current projections are around a million dollars on the operating side uh, and to put that in perspective the, the, the expenditures exceed a hundred million dollars annually so uh, you know it's it's less than around one percent which we typically float around that one one percent area and a lot of it uh, quite frankly is due to salary gapping so if we had, were up to full complement we probably would have been right on budget uh, and uh, you know the the reality is as well as there's the potential to be over budget and the, those monies go into all of our surplus goes into the uh, the, the contingency reserve in, in the event that there is a year where we are over budget but uh, you know I think recognizing that it's all the managers and the general managers that are managing the programs those are the ones that are watching the dollars I mean uh, I'm not going to take any uh, praise for it because it's it's those people that are running the programs and doing the day-to-day -day stuff that are watching the budgets on a daily basis that uh, ensures that we're not over or exceeding our budget on, a, on an annual basis. Councilor Lawrence. Um, yeah, I'd like to further comment um, kind of what uh, Councilor Corbett said. Um, coming obviously new in uh, from the last fall election, I've your staff, all staff, I just want to compliment all of you for the jobs you do and our fisc your fiscal responsibility in the state of this um, county financially. You deserve a big pat on the back because you are the ones that have done this and take maybe some direction from us as elected officials. But um, coming from the private world, um, you know, you always hear about uh, public uh, wasteland and uh, over gross expenditures that are done irresponsibly. but. All of you in this room, um, I tip my hat to you. Fantastic job. And looking at this, this is just uh, proof in the pudding, as they say. Good. Thank you. So uh, I'll get this motion off the floor. Um, whereas the Ontario government has announced its intention to invest in small and rural municipalities to improve service delivery and efficiency, and whereas Holloman County is in receipt of a one time unconditional funds of 725,000 related to this investment. Therefore, be it resolved that in accordance with the grant intent, Haldeman County wishes to identify internal and external customer service improvements, including software improvements for customer service needs and internal technolo technological efficiencies. That the funds be contributed to the capital replacement reserve information technology to facilitate these improvements, and that staff complete any reporting necessary to meet the provincial reporting requirements related to this funding. All in favor? 
that's carried <coughs> unanimously. And uh, did I have a mover and a seconder? No. So I need a mover and a seconder for all those 14 items that I had already wrote, read out. <laughs> Sorry? I'm a mover. You're a mover? Okay. I moved it before, but oh, you did changed you? the resolution, okay. which is fine. Oh, second. second, Councillor Medcalf. You should read them again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> get right on that. What was the third one? <laughs> so I just, uh, I, just to capture kind of what Councillor Corbett and Lawrence said, that's, um, it, I, you know, we're, uh, we're sitting here four minutes to 12 after uh, completing a full operating budget, and, and I'm not sure that uh, any of us uh, over the years would have thought we'd been able to get through through the budget uh, so seamlessly but you know us not asking the questions is is not a reflection of um, the answers not necessarily being there it's a reflection of the work that 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 you've all <coughs> done over the over the years to get to this point where this document now is such a fine-tuned piece of document that it does provide all those answers that we all need and so coming in here today, it makes it so much simpler for us to, to walk through and, and, and you, know, you only really see something that is glaring because you know, we all know what's been going on over the course of the year with the reports that come through. So it does make it a lot simpler. And, uh, and as Mark said, and as uh, Danny said, it's, uh, it's, it's a reflection of, of the staff and all of you uh, who manage your departments, who ensure that uh, you meet the uh, the commitments that uh, that you've uh, put forth over the uh, course of the the year in the budget, and we thank you for that. and And it makes it uh, so much easier for us to go out in the public to be able to say that you know, this is what you can expect, and 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 it's actually happening, and it has been that for the past few years. And with this budget, we're still sitting at a uh, you know overall increase of uh, inflation, which is what we've targeted for the number of years. So, so I thank you for that. I guess maybe just Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to thank Council because uh, having been in the municipal world for a long, long time, it's, it's the relationship and the articulation of Council's wishes and what's important to Council and then I give it to staff of listening to be able to, to meld it in so that when we get here there's not surprises and the, and the things that are important to Council are articulated within the budget and then the appendices that have been added in over years just pulling it out for transparency, all those changes in, in those pay, in summaries just makes it that much easier. So there's lots of councils that would change their mind and be this way and that way and have different ideas. The councils we've had have been <coughs> extremely thoughtful and well-focused and, uh, and, and have articulated what, they're, what they want from staff and that makes it a lot easier for staff in preparing a package that will meet your needs. So we appreciate that as well. Good. All in favor? That's carried unanimously. <clears throat> In a mover and a seconder that the presentation from Charmaine Corliss, Treasurer 2019 Draft Tax Supported Operating Budget be received as information. Councillor Patterson, Councillor Delamani, all in favor? That's carried unanimously. And Moved by Councillor Shurton. Looking for a seconder. <laughs> Councillor Corbett. Yeah. This meeting now oh, adjourn at. Oh. Before that, maybe we can just confirm that it was 2.32? 2 2.23%. 2 2 but don't we normally mention that in a. Or doesn't that come out? Well, I, no, I read the number. Oh, okay. The motion, which was the, the dollar <coughs> figure, that okay. dollar figure translates. translates to that amount. Okay, that's fine. It's so for the press. So actually I'm good to move it. I'm actually for sure you are. <laughs> that this meeting is now adjourned at 11.59 p.m. All in favor? A.M. Yeah. That's carried unanimously. Yeah. Well,